So imagine then you have an inner army of plasma cells, of white blood cells that release immunoglobulins, uh, antibodies that are strong defenses against internal invaders on a microscopic level, that memorize those invaders, pass the information to the legion of white blood cells so that your immune system can tolerate and defend you uh, in any foreign agent in your inner world. Now, our research has shown, along with several other people, that when people can trade those survival emotions, those stress hormones like fear and anxiety and, and pain and suffering and anger and frustration and judgment and competition uh, for more elevated emotions, more heart-centered emotions, it is those heart-centered emotions that we are able to open our heart and feel uh, kindness and compassion and to have a love for life and, and to feel gratitude and, and appreciation and, really work with our body to elevate our emotional state, it makes sense then that if we do this properly, we are going to convert from the gas pedal of the sympathetic nervous system uh, to teach our body to break that pattern of constantly being in survival. And when we start to feel elevated emotions, we feel less separate from everyone and everything, and we start to feel more connected to everyone and everything. And when we do this properly, and we start to open our hearts, our research shows that we begin to strengthen our immune system. In fact, our research shows that for 10 minutes a day, three times a day, uh, if you practiced feeling those elevated emotions, uh, you would begin to release a, a, an immunoglobulin called immunoglobulin A, which is your body's primary defense against bacteria and viruses. It is the body's natural flu shot that creates an immunity to the environment, both macroscopically and microscopically. So then 10 minutes a day, three times a day, uh, changing your mood and breaking the stress response and teaching your body that it feels safe enough to be in the present moment uh, that it can create, that it's moving out of survival. But doing this properly, the body's so objective that it does not know the difference between the experience and the environment that's creating the emotion of love and gratitude and you doing it by volition. Your body begins to move more into the present moment and here comes the parasympathetic nervous system and now its job is to restore, to rebalance, to repair, to increase metabolic functions, to release uh, 1,300 different chemicals that can begin to restore and repair your body. The body now is moving out of emergency and there are resources to heal. And so feeling those heart-centered emotions and changing from fear, say, to love is going to begin to cause those white blood cells, those plasma cells, to release the proper proteins epigenetically that are gonna cause your body to have a strength against any virus, bacteria, a fungus, or mold, or even cancer cell, and we've proven uh, that our, our students, by reversing cancer, have done this very exact thing. Now, you won't hear about this in any pharmaceutical ad. You won't see it on any television commercial because television commercials and marketing and, and corporate America wants people to believe that we need something outside of us to change our internal state. We need to rely on something uh, to exogenous from us to, to begin to heal us or to help us. And our work is about something else. It's about changing our inner state by thought alone. And so when we do this properly and we trade those survival emotions for elevated emotions and we're able to practice that every day, uh, it makes sense to us then that people are going to start to heal and they are going to produce a legion uh, of strong white blood cells uh, that can memorize and attack any foreign agents. And there's been other research uh, that shows that as fear levels go up, uh, it suppresses uh, our immune system dramatically. And when we elevate our emotions, uh, we see then that, uh, that we reverse that process. So I want you to think about the understanding behind that so that the next time you are experiencing uh, fear or the next time uh, everybody else is worried about something in their environment and there's a collective consciousness of, of fear or co collective consciousness of believing that something in their outer environment is stronger 
then the body's innate capacity to heal, that you have some resources, to, uh, something to do with it. So many people uh, have secretly wanted to uh, not go to work. Uh, they have secretly not wanted to continue uh, uh, the routine of their lives. And this is a perfect opportunity uh, for all of us uh, to understand that you're breaking routine. You're not going to the same place. You're not seeing the same people. You're not doing the same things. Um, many people are confined to their homes or confined to, confined to a small uh, environment. And why not then use this time properly? Why not, instead of waiting for uh, this um, circumstance to change, uh, if you're waiting, you're not creating. A uh, perfect opportunity for you to retreat from your life and to begin to work with your body and to start dreaming, dreaming again and, and creating uh, so that when you do emerge uh, out of uh, your dwelling or out of your home, uh, you will be resistant uh, to any condition in your, inner, uh, your outer environment and that we are not victims uh, to the circumstances in our outer world that we're making those strong changes uh, by thought alone.